Hey, 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 guys. I am back. And I'm going to try to complete what we started this morning when we were talking about acceleration and um, suddenlies. I could not. The phone kept freezing. So I pray that this time, you know, we're going to have uh, clarity. Let me see. The camera looks fuzzy. Okay. You can see a little bit better. So for those that are just jumping on, uh, for the first time, my name is Faith Wokoma. I direct a ministry called Warring Ministries, pastor a church called Legacy Center, and run a business called Ask Dr. Faith. So we talk about everything on my periscopes. <laughs> Good. Thank you. You said, I love your teachings. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. It's freezing again. If you can see and it's not freezing, can you give me a thumbs up? What in the world? Okay, so someone said um, Periscope has been acting up. Okay, okay, good, good, good. All right, so what I had started, and uh, some of you, my followers, you guys see my new jewelry. I was telling you guys about my new jewelry this morning on my teeth, and um, that's why I didn't Periscope yesterday, because I'm learning how to talk uh, with them in my mouth. So, all right. Okay, oh, someone said say a prayer first. You know, you know, that's good. But let me tell you something about living in the spirit. And I think that this is going to be a really good note for everybody. One thing about living in the spirit is that we don't always have to pray because the spirit of God is living in us. And when we're doing the agenda of God, then heaven already aligns. So a lot of times people and uh, what you said, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good. But a lot of times, you know, you ask somebody and say, hey, can you um, help clean the church? Oh, I got to pray about it. Oh, can you come and help feed the poor? Oh, I got to pray about it. First of all, when it is the will of the Lord, the only thing that you may need to pray about is maybe the time. But you will never really need to pray about doing the will of God. Things that are building the kingdom of God up. Now, if you have an issue with saying no, maybe. Maybe that's an area. But the good thing about living in the spirit is that we can always, we always carry the presence of God with us. And so if somebody says, I need you to uh, do something for the Lord. I don't necessarily need to pray about it because I, I live in the spirit. I don't know if that makes sense. And so when you begin to, you know, and this is really important too, because everybody talks about retaliation and, you know, fear, but I don't always have to fear retaliation. Right. And I don't want this to be addressed to, to the person who shared. I think that was a good note, but I wanted to use it as a teaching moment. Um, because I'm a teacher retaliation. We don't have to always fear that because we live in the spirit and part of living in the spirit is carrying the presence of God with us wherever we go and so we set the agenda and the tone of our lives by the awareness of who we are in God and because I know that I'm in God there's certain things that just won't touch us because I know that I'm in God there and, and God has certain directives for my life there's certain things that I don't need to pray about but that's not what this periscope is about I just wanted to use that as a teaching moment so I had started sharing this morning that that our our church our leadership for our ministry has been on a fast uh, for our conference next week and for our church and on Tuesday we had an, an unusual encounter during uh, the prayer time where the presence of the Lord fell and began to talk to us about uh, the funding that was getting ready to come to our church and how you know we needed to prepare ourselves and how we're gonna manage all the money it was just a, a glorious encounter you could just feel the presence of God and people began to prophesy on on the phone line that had never prophesied before people were like I need to give a thousand dollars and you know let me tell you something about giving guys giving should not be hard giving should never be something that is manipulated it looks like we have um some trolls on today so if you see anything crazy just block it but giving should never be something that's ever manipulated when the presence of God is on something 
then there should be an ease and there should be a joy. And usually when God has called you to something, he begins to already uh, speak to people's heart. Or when you make a request, that request is easily uh, made because you're flowing in what the Lord has called you to do. So when that started to happen, God began to release this word, which I've been releasing this word really for about the last two years that we're in this immense season of suddenlies. And when we talk about suddenlies, we're not just talking about something happening from nowhere. And I wanted to give you guys the example of the coming of Jesus. If you look in the Old Testament, there was a precursor uh, of the coming of a savior. There was uh, in Isaiah and in Psalms, there was this uh, languaging that kind of spoke to the Savior that was coming that would redeem us from sin, that would redeem us from the nature of David. But between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's this 400 year gap where it is dark, where there is nothing, where there is no clue of a Savior, there's no clue of a Redeemer. And then all of a sudden, what it seems like all of a sudden, Jesus steps onto the scene and changes the course of history. When we're talking about, uh, when we're talking about suddenlies, we're not taking, we're not just, you know, even you will see so, lots of stories in the New Testament where people were waiting for Jesus, where they were waiting for an angel to turn the water, when they were waiting for someone to pray for them. And in a moment's time, Jesus walks on the scene, or not even Jesus, Peter, or Paul walks on the scene and what had seemed to be years and years of infirmities are turned around in a moment of a time. When we're talking about suddenlies, they're not just, oh, this just happened, but it's usually connected to things that we have been waiting for, for years and years where there has been a gap. Even when we talk about creation, it says that the earth, I'm sorry, my hair is, is acting funny. It says that the earth was formless and void. And we don't know for how many billions of years. And then all of a sudden, it was time in God's heart to begin to create and to begin to release. And within a moment's time, within seven days, what was formless and void for what could be millions of years now had fruitfulness, now had life, now had um, growth. And what the Lord is saying is that we are in a season where people People have had uh, seasons of formlessness, uh, seasons of where there was a void, where it felt like darkness, where it felt like there was this long depth of nothingness, and now God steps into your scene. When it suddenly happens, there are several things that happen in that moment. Suddenly, usually throw off our theology and they usually throw off what we think is normal. When Jesus comes on the scene, he first comes on the scene through Mary. And a virgin now conceives a son through the Holy Spirit that threw off everybody's theology, that threw off everybody's understanding of how the Messiah should come. When God begins to do some things that are extraordinary, and thank you guys for sharing with your friends, when God begins to share, um, do something that is extraordinary or something that has been uh, being held up in the spirit realm, the way that God does it oftentimes is unconventional. That's why some of you guys are all of a sudden feeling like you need to move. That's why some of you guys all of a sudden feeling like you need to launch your own business. That's why some of you guys feeling all of a sudden that you need to begin to prepare for marriage because God is getting ready to shift you into that very thing that you're waiting for. When it suddenly happens, it's usually not how we think. And this is really, really important for you single people. When God releases your mate, oftentimes they're not what you thought. They're not what your list was. And I, I'll do a, a lot of teaching on marriage in September. But you need to ri rip up your little list. Some of you guys feel like it's formless and void and nothing is happening. But it's because you're looking for something that's not necessarily what God is doing. But in this season, and this is really important, I Again, for marriage, God always looks at your future and not your present. And so when we create these lists that are carnal, we're creating them based off of our present need. But you can create what I call a core values list that is spiritual so that when that suddenly happens, even if it doesn't look like what you thought it would look like on the outside, what the core values, the love for God, the, the push, the way they push you to God, meet up with that and you can begin to walk in it. And let me tell you about 
uh, the right one. When God sends your, your mate, it literally feels like it's a dream. And it literally feels, this is another aspect of suddenlies. It feels like what you had been waiting for for a very long time has now happened in no time at all. It feels like what you have been waiting for for a very long time now seems like nothing at all. And so we're getting ready into this season where we're going to feel like we're in a dream because the goodness of God in a suddenly and in acceleration seems to overtake us. And you're literally like, is this really happening? Uh, is, is this really true? And that's why it was really important for you to deal with your emotional issues so that you do not frustrate what God is doing with your words. It was really important for you to deal with your worthiness issues so that you receive what God is saying and not uh, block it with your words. Some of you guys, God wants to do good things, but you say stuff like this, oh, it's too good to be true. Or you begin to be very sarcastic or your 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 paranoia or suspicion comes in like oh there has to be a catch god is only doing this because of whatever and what you need to do is you need to begin to combat those lies that you have believed in your heart so that you do not forfeit what god is doing in this hour a lot of what god is doing in this hour has nothing to do with us on tuesday night when the presence of god fell on the phone line and 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 people began to prophesy the destiny of legacy center our church i was overtaken i could not even move the weight of glory was so much but there was a sobriety because we knew that what everybody was prophesying how the nations it was going to impact the hollywood and all these things that legacy center is going to do has nothing to do with us and so when you deal with unworthiness sometimes you cannot accept the suddenly or the acceleration because you're looking at yourself but god is saying look at who god is don't measure what god wants to do in your life based on your own uh, uh, worthiness. Measure it based on who God is. All right. So suddenly throw off our uh, theology. Suddenly often feel like they're dreams. Suddenly don't necessarily mean they happen from nowhere. Suddenly are usually connected to a promise that have take has taken a long time. But within a short period of time, they, they are now happening. Suddenly are always connected to acceleration because what happens is things begin to be accelerated. This is really big. One of the testimonies that we got was one of my spiritual sons. We've been praying for him for over a year. He had struggled with a lot of mental bondages. You know, we've done deliverance. We've done everything. And he was just having a hard time. And he said that starting three days ago, he said, literally, the fire of God has gripped him that he is like devouring the Bible. He has read three chapters in six hours and he's having revelation. He said he had eight pages of notes within three hours. The Holy Spirit is falling on him and he is hungry for the word of God. So we've been contending for our son, this, this spiritual son of ours for two years and within three days God has done more than what we could have done in a year. And so some of you guys have felt like you were behind. Some of you guys felt like God, you know, you, you feel like you have to catch up. But what God is saying is if you can submit to what I'm doing in this hour, what feels like it's going to take forever. Sorry if I'm spitting. I'm trying to manage with these braces. What uh, what seems like would have taken forever, God is going to do it in, in a minute and he's going to catch you up. That is a word to some of you guys that God is getting ready to catch you up. Some of you guys have just come to the Lord in the last several years or in the last several months and you have this hunger and you just want to grow. And the Lord says, as you submit to him, because every prophetic word is conditional. As you begin to submit to him, as you begin to align with him, you're going to begin to be caught up. God is going to give you an acceleration in revelation in understanding the word, in understanding his will, in understanding what God has for your life. So what acceleration does, and the way that that acceleration works is that in the spirit realm, there, uh, time is not linear. Linear means time is not an accelerated line in the spirit realm. Time is secular in the spirit realm. And that's why time can be bent. That means the middle can meet the middle. That's why it says that Jesus is the beginning and he's the end. That means at the same time you're at the beginning and that you're at the end. Scripture says that better is the end of a thing than the beginning. It also, we also know that when you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something. You're at the beginning of God. And so when we're dealing with acceleration, the things that were at the end can be can connect to the beginning and the beginning can connect to the end. 
And God is bending time and allowing you to catch up and allowing you to be positioned for what he has. Because, and I'm going to preach a lot on this at our Builders Conference next week. I told you guys earlier this morning that we're giving away five scholarships. And you can email info at warringministries.org if you want to come but you didn't have the registration. We're giving away five scholarships. Um but one of the reasons that God is accelerating things and, and he's allowing you to experience these suddenlies is not so that you can say, oh, finally I have a house. Finally I have money. Finally I have my ministry. It's so that you can be prepared for the harvest. God is getting ready to literally bring souls at our door. And not everybody's going to win souls because they're preaching in a pulpit. God wants to bring souls to your job. God wants to bring souls to your business. And if you're not not in the right business, if you're not in the right city, then you're going to miss these souls. That's why there's this, this push about being divinely connected or divinely aligned so that you can begin to walk out what God has for your life. Starting July, um, and I'm going to release a lot of this word this weekend, but also at the National Prophetic Summit that I, I'm part of with my pastor in D.C. in, in September, that part of starting July, we're entering into an immense season of harvest and the accelerated season for believers is for the next three to four years. God is wanting us to be aligned. God is wanting our, our barns to be filled with plenty. God is wanting us to buy homes. God is wanting us to clear our credit. God is wanting us to save up, you know, so that we have 50, 60, 70, $100,000 in our accounts. Because after this three, four years, I believe going into the fourth uh, year of the next president, we're going to begin to see a cultural shift in our nation where there's going to be a famine that's going to hit this country and what the Lord is trying to do is prepare believers and align believers so that they are the resources and they are filled with the Holy Spirit they're the ones that people are coming to for prayer and for healing and for deliverance that's why it is important that you know your purpose that's what that's my passion to give people language for their purpose that's why it's important for you to understand the spiritual gifts because we're going to be the ones the world is looking for that's why I'm passionate about people starting their own businesses because we're going to be the ones people come for, to resources for. It is really, really, really important. So, because my mouth is starting to hurt with these braces, I will stop talking and I'll take one or two questions. Um, I'll probably take more. And then I will uh, release you guys. But I wanted to release that word over you. And if you believe the word of the Lord, it shall be well unto you. You don't have to see it. I know some of you guys right now, it doesn't look like it. You're not experiencing this. I mean, we're literally under an open heaven. We're literally under an open heaven. We're seeing healings. We're seeing financial breakthrough money. I mean, it, and this is something that I shared with, with our ministry, that if you're not afraid of money, then you can have it. The poverty spirit makes you afraid of money. It makes you feel like I cannot handle it. It makes you feel like I'm not worthy of it. It makes you feel like I don't, I, what, what will I do with it? Maybe I'll stop serving God if I have it. Uh, where can we take the courses? You take the courses at Ask drfaith.com and I didn't even plug my course today. The next course we have is June 16th and June 24th and it's for anybody who feels like they have a prophetic gift or anyone who's called as a prophet or feels like they're called as a prophet. I'm going to teach you guys for four hours on clarifying your assignment, understanding how the giftings work. Can your mate be your assignment? No. I have a whole blog on that. I think I, I, I write a lot on relationships and I teach a lot on relationships. I just haven't had time on periscopes. Don't make, look, let me tell you something. If you meet somebody and you are teaching them how to pray, teaching them how to read the word, teaching them how to walk with God, they're just your assignment. They're not your mate. Me people make the same mistake. They make this mistake all the time. You singles. Someone is your ministry and you think they're your mate because you can see their potential and their anointing. You don't just marry potential. You also marry hard work. You also marry what you see. And so do not, do not, do not, do not make an assignment your mate. Let Just do the will of the Lord, help raise them up, help develop them, speak into them, and then release them. And if maybe six months, one year, God brings you back together, fine. But very rarely, and don't don't date people that are 
you're unequally yoked. I've done a lot of periscopes on this. You can find it on YouTube. I teach a lot on marriage and relationships. Don't date people that you're unequally yoked with. It's easier to be pulled down than pulled up. Okay, what's the difference between the class and a private session? Okay, all my courses are in a group setting. They're webinars, and I'm literally teaching like a course. Private sessions, people hire me to help coach them with their um, businesses, with their relationships, with their uh, ministry assignments. That's one-on-one. -on -one. You're paying me per hour, and uh, it goes deep. It goes into your life. I get into your business. I help, help, help you walk through inner healing. I help you walk through issues. So uh, somebody was asking about that that's that's how that works all right God has been telling me to move but I don't have a job in that city sometimes God will have you say yes first and then he gives you a job sometimes he'll have you move first and then he'll give you a job sometimes it, it, you know it's different for everybody else uh, I, I love wisdom you know I say go ahead and apply for jobs in that city see what doors open up and then move there but there's some of you guys God will do like Abraham and he will say move and once you take that step of obedience then everything else lines up so you need to know how God is telling you to move but if you've been applying to jobs to a city and they're not opening but God is telling you move to that city he may be wanting to see your faith first before you do that um, and so you just have to gauge talk to your pastors talk to your mentors and get an understanding of what that looks like all right Yep, Tisa, that's one of my spiritual daughters. Uh, we we worked through that. She moved to Virginia. We knew the Lord was moving her. She had had the interview, but she didn't have the job yet. But she started packing, and her faith opened that door. Feeling the push to, to calling by, I can't shake loneliness. What do I do? I'm not sure what that question means. You need to get in a com community that loves you, a community that celebrates you, community that understands who you are, and get healed with that. But I talked the other day, you may be dealing with with loneliness uh, but being alone is not the same as loneliness so if you're dealing with loneliness there's probably an inner healing issue that you need to work through or you went through a season and this is a prophetic word for you the person who asked that question you went through a season where you were hurt emotionally and you have isolated yourself from people and because of that you're not allowing people to come into your life that can heal you and allow you to walk through that and so the Lord is calling you back into a place of trust so that you can uh, have people that love you around you so that you're not lonely anymore. All right. I'll take a couple more questions and then uh, I'll go. Bless you guys. We are excited. Um, and I really pray that that word just encouraged you. We are going to continue to share some of the testimonies. Uh, I mean, we I shared earlier, somebody who's been praying for a job, so one of her friends emailed her and said, I think this is for you. And she calls them, like kills the interview, and we're waiting to hear back. I uh, have a dream purpose. Okay, I, I, I missed that question. How do you start finding your purpose? I have a book on my website, AskDrFaith.com. It is $2.99 read it are you taking any new mentees no I am not taking any new mentees but I have four mentors that I have trained they're all ministers they're all prophetic and they are taking mentees so you what you would do is email info at askdrfaith.com you will have a consultation with me I will pair you with a mentor that I feel like is the best fit these are all people that have been part of my ministry for years and then you can be mentored by them all right Okay, how do you deal with family that don't believe women can preach? Uh, you don't listen to them. If you know that the Lord has called you to preach, you know, <laughs> Jesus was pretty ruthless sometimes. He said, let the, let the dead bury the dead. Not saying that your family is dead. But what that means is you cannot worry about people who do not really see who you are. And as hard as it is as your family, you do not get validation from your family. You want to get people around you that understand your calling and uh, can propel you. I want to be a speaker. Where do you start? Start with prayer. Start with intercession. Get in a church where you can serve. Um, get in a church that understand that you have a gifting. And you need to decide, are you a speaker or are you a preacher? Because everybody says, I want to be a motivational speaker. That's very different than being a preacher. And so you need to get clarity about what that looks like and then go from there. What if your mother attacks you constantly? Move away from her. Tell her that, Mom, I've had enough of this. I'm not going to listen anymore. When she begins to attack you, then you need to uh, tell her, thank you very much for your input. 
but I'm not listening anymore. And you need to develop people that get attacked by families and all that. It's probably lack of boundaries and you're probably in a controlling environment and the Lord is wanting to strengthen you to be able to say no. Yes, I do speak at retreats. I speak at conferences. Uh, you can email my admin at info at warringministriesint.org. Can you be a prophet and not preach? I will teach on that during the course that I'm offering the webinar, June 16th and 24th. You can be, but you need to be able to teach because the, one of the trademarks of a prophet is teaching people how to hear the voice of God. You cannot be a prophet and you're locked in your house. That's a lie, right? You, need, you can, Yes, a big part of us is interceding, but you have to be uh, accountable to a community that you've been called to develop. The Lord spoke the words to me yesterday. Okay, the dam's about to burst. All right, I missed a couple of questions. I'll take two more. I'm going to get off at 4.15. Okay. Facebook is not the place to email me. I get bombarded with emails on Facebook. Please email me at info at askdrfaith.com. When we thank God for... Okay, we thank God. All right. Do you have a mentorship program? We do have a mentorship program. You can read up on the mentorship program at warringministriesint.org and then email us. Warringministriesint.org. Does God lead you to divorce? No. Scripture is very clear that he hates divorce. But do you lead yourself to divorce? Divorce, yes. Meaning, you have, you may have married somebody that you had no business marrying in the first place, or you married somebody who you thought you were supposed to marry, and they have been cheating, they have been beating you, uh, they have abandoned you. Those are the only reasons that, as a as a minister, as a pastor, and as a coach, that I'll, I'll walk somebody through that. Uh, the mentorship program is what you decide. Someone asked, "How long is it?" It's depending on on how what you decide. You pay seventy five dollars a month for it. All right. Signs. God wants you to change careers. I did a whole periscope on it. It's on my YouTube when it's time for you to leave. Are you able to talk more about the famine you mentioned? Uh, maybe at some other point. How do you begin to do deliverance on someone? Okay, first, make sure that you're trained in deliverance. Two, make sure that you have somebody else with you. Uh, and then three, if you're trained in it, you'll know how to do it. I will be doing the July course is on spiritual warfare and deliverance. So if you're interested in that, you'll be able to take that course and um, I'll teach you on some practical ways to do that. I'd like for you to mentor me. I live in New York. All right. So the way I won't be able to mentor you, I'm not taking any new mentors until maybe October, but our mentors can, uh, the leaders in our ministry can, and uh, our mentees are all over the world. So everything is, via, is done via phone or Skype. Okay, three more minutes and I go, are there scholarships for the June classes? No, I don't give scholarships for my classes because it's how I feed my children. Those are That's my business. So I'll never give scholarships uh, through Ask Dr. Faith. But our ministry does give scholarships from time to time. Now, there are some courses that I feel that I have that people like, especially when I train singles and newlyweds, people will say, I want to pay for somebody. So if there's somebody on this phone that wants to pay for someone, you know, to do uh, on the on Periscope that wants to pay for somebody's course in June, then that person who asked, we can give you that scholarship. All right. I know I missed one or two other questions. Will you do a scope on love and how it triumphs fear? I've taught on that a little bit, and yeah, I can keep that. What is prophetic deliverance mantle? Guys, when you're called into the prophetic, especially office of a prophet, you should walk in deliverance and healing. I keep getting uh, these people that say, you know, they're prophets, but they, know, they don't know anything about deliverance and healing. Those are That's all part of the, the package. Mantles is an anointing to do something, an anointing or a function to do something and so if people say you have a mantle that means you've been uh, anointed or wired to, for a particular function was presented with okay I, I'm missing that one okay a couple more minutes then I gotta go you can put it back up the questions I missed sorry are there mentors in California? All our mentors are on the phone, so it doesn't matter where you are, you'd get them. But I'm sure they are. I just don't know any. How do you register for courses? AskDrFaith.com. You go to online courses, and that's where all my courses are. 
Bless you guys. Uh, for dream interpretation, thank you, Tisa. You email dreamteam at warringministriesint.org. Those dream interpreters are all my daughters that I've trained to interpret dreams, and they will do a really good job. So don't send me your dreams. I don't have time to interpret them. How do you know you have a mantle? I wouldn't really focus on a mantle. I would focus on figuring out if you have a ministry calling. I have just put up a new teaching. We've put up a lot of... Uh, T uh, teachings on our site that are cheap $9.99, $7.99 and I, there's one called Ministry 101 that will help you understand how you know if you have a calling don't focus on a mantle, focus on your calling and then your mantle will be attached to your calling because someone put the Dream Team email up again, okay so you go pick that up, it's a $9.99 investment if you, you know okay my YouTube channel, search for Dr. Faith, alright Bless you guys. Have a good day. Um, let's see. Tomorrow's Friday. I'll see if I can uh, periscope and go into some um, some, uh, some the prophetic worship. Someone had asked for me to teach on prophetic worship. So I'll do uh, a periscope on that and we will go from there. Thank you guys for sharing these periscopes. Are there any men on the team? I have men on other teams. I have men on the intercession team. We have men that are a part of our ministry team. But let me tell you something about the prophetic. Women are usually more prophetic than men. That's not necessarily saying that uh, men are not prophetic, but men are more wired to be apostolic. And so when it comes to dream interpretation, men, there's lots of men that interpret dreams, but women usually get it a little bit quicker. Um, and so things like that, just, they just happen that right now the three interpreters are uh, ladies, but we do have men in our ministries that have sons uh, that I, I disciple and that I mentor, and they just do other things they're into business they're into making money um and uh we wire them to be very apostolic and to build and to create and to pioneer all right bless you guys talk to you soon bye bye